I am Lucy Wyman, uh, as previously introduced. I'm a software engineer on the Bolt team. And today, I want to talk to you about the thing I spend 40 hours a week working on, Bolt. Um, so yeah, uh, this slide says all the things that I just said out loud. And <laughs> um, over the course of this talk, I'm going to give you an introduction to Bolt. So this is meant to be like, if you've never heard of Bolt before, we'll give you an overview of what it does. And then I'll introduce all of the things that are new in Bolt since we last introduced Bolt at last year's Puppet Conf. And we actually were looking at the old release notes from last October, like right after we released. And like dash dash module path is new since then. And like using Bolt without a module path specification is unthinkable now. So basically all of Bolt's is new in the last year. We'll go over some of the highlights. Um, and throughout the demo or throughout the talk, there will be demos. I also know that I'm the thing standing between you and lunch, so bear with me. Um, we just released Bolt 1.0. Yay! Woo! Uh, <laughs> this means that you have greater stability with Bolt 1.0. Uh, we use Sember, so uh, this means that we pinky swear not to make any breaking changes without telling you first. Um, and it also means that we really support and uh, like think that Bolt is ready to be used uh, in more stable systems and uh, can really is really production ready essentially. So if you want to install Bolt, the best way to do it is with your package manager. So there's instructions for how to do that at pup.pt slash install Bolt. And if you want to follow along, with this at all, definitely feel free to. It's really quick to install. Um, yeah. All right, the basics. So the very fundamental uh, like building block of Bolts or like the, the foundation of it is a task. Oh, uh, first I should talk about what Bolt is actually. So uh, Bolt is a remote task runner and a task is just a script. So Bolt can run scripts, commands, uh, and tasks on remote systems. It distributes and executes those scripts uh, using transports that you know and love, SSH, WinRM. We also support uh, PCP if you want to run Bolt over your PE managed nodes. Uh, and these scripts can be in any language that your targets can run. So Bash, PowerShell, Python, Ruby. If your target can run it, Bolt can too. Supports many concurrent connections, and yeah, running stuff remotely. So the foundational part of Bolt is a task, and uh, task is really just a script, like full stop, the script that you already have in your home dir that like resets your configuration for that one service, like that's a task. Uh, a task can optionally have metadata, which allows you to more easily share and distribute your task with your team members or other people in the community who can use that task. So the metadata is JSON, it's stored right next to the task, and it can include things like a description of what the task does, uh, any parameters that the task has, whether it supports no op, et cetera. Again, tasks can be in any language that your target can run. It can have parameters and uh, tasks are distributed in modules and they live in the tasks directory of a module. So uh, if we can go to back to the demo, I will show you what a task kind of looks like and how it acts. Okay, so uh, I've got a puppetized demo um, directory here. And what I really want to show here is I'm using this a puppetize directory as my quote puppet module, but there's really nothing special about a puppet module in this case. Like this is literally just a directory with two directories inside of it. So you don't need to know any puppet to get started using Bolt is, is uh, what I'm trying to show here. Uh, there's no like special dot files or configuration. I don't need to run puppet module in it even. I literally just need to make these directories. And we can see that I've got three files in my task directory. Uh, so uh, the task that I'm using for this demo is to update a package on your system. So let's take a look at what this task actually looks like. And 
I scrolled a little too far, I think. But uh, this is just a shell script that takes two parameters. So it takes a name and a, let me actually, sorry, the uh, illusion of my demo is now destroyed. But I do want to show you what this looks like. OK, so I've got my shell script here. It takes two parameters. So it takes a name and a provider. I can either pass these in over standard in or as environment variables. So in this case, I'm using the environment variables, which are prefixed with that capital PT underscore. Um, I check for if I'm using Debian. And if I am, then I set uh, an environment variable that I don't want it to be in interactive mode. And then I have my command line command, which will run the provider dash y update and then the name of the package that I want to update. And then I've got some nice like status output here. So back to the actual demo, maybe? Oh no, OK. So uh, I've also got some metadata about my task in this JSON file. Uh, so I've got a description of my task. Uh, I say that it does not support no op. This is actually default to false, so it's technically not necessary. But wanted to show that it was there. And then I've got two parameters, like I said, a description. And then I also set the type so that I can validate the types that are coming in. So then if someone tries to run this task with types that don't match the types that I've specified, they'll get a nice error about um, why that is. Uh, I've also got my implementations enumerated down here. I'm going to get into implementations more later on in the talk, so I kind of want to leave them for now. Um, but you'll make note of the PS1 file that you also saw in the tree output that I had. So with that, let's see. Uh, this I just ran bolt task show. Uh, so that is showing you all of the tasks that are in the module path that Bolt is looking in. Uh, you'll notice that there are a lot of them. A lot of these are modules that come pre-installed with Bolt that have those tasks available. Um, so that's why there's a lot of them. And then a couple of them are modules that I have already installed as well. Uh, but the one I want to point out is that puppetize update package one. So just making sure that that's there. And then I can uh, take a closer look at that task itself using bolt task show. Uh, so this will show me information about the task from my metadata. So the description, the parameters, et cetera, um, and also the module path where it lives. And then I can run the task. So I've got a node group in my um, in my inventory file uh, that is SSH nodes. So we saw the inventory file in the keynote, um, but that's just a set of four nodes that I already have running. And I ran it with the parameters, uh, the package name, HTTPD, and the provider of yum, since all of my nodes are CentOS. And it looks like it successfully updated HTTPD on all of the nodes magically. Uh, back to slides. So that's kind of the basics of how tasks work. Again, just a bash script, just some JSON metadata, uh, nothing fancy except for uh, weird demo tools. All right. So <laughs> tasks are great. They're a really easy way to get started using tools that you already have and can use. But as your uh, like automation journey continues, you may find that you run into more complex problems that a simple shell script cannot necessarily handle. So for those situations, we have made both plans. And plans are ways that you can meaningfully compose tasks together or other Bolt commands uh, to do like more complex tasks. Uh, Matt brought up the example of deploying an application. That's a really common one that we see. Um, tasks can have multiple tasks in them. They can compute task input. They can process output. Uh, they can give you nice errors that you can configure or logging. Uh, they are written in the Puppet plan language. So it's 
kind of a mix of Puppet, and then we've added some special plan functions to that as well. So those include things like run task and Puppet DB query, and a handful of others that allow you to interact with Bolt from your plan. Um, just like tasks, plans can have parameters, and uh, as you might expect, they live in the plans directory of your module. So kind of similar to tasks in some ways, um, but we'll see here how they are different back in the demo. So let's clear the screen. Um, I've got a plans directory in my fake module here. Uh, and inside of that, again, nothing fancy. Uh, I've just got two plans. Uh, one that I'm going to show you later to demonstrate the apply statement that we saw in the keynote. Um, but right now I wanna look at this update Apache plan. So, uh, pretty simple plan. This is leveraging the tasks that I just wrote that will update packages. And instead what I wanna do is update Apache and then restart the service and verify that it's successfully restarted. Uh, really simple plan, but also, and I could just run each of these from the Bolt command line, but that's really hard to share with other people. Uh, I would have to tell them like, okay, first you wanna update the Apache package using this Bolt task, and then you want to restart the service using this command, and then you wanna make sure that it actually worked using this command. Um, and you can imagine how, uh, for more complex tasks, this could get even longer. And so plans are a really good way to uh, distribute that kind of automation. So I've got my puppetize update package task right here. I'm going to run it on the nodes that I pass into the plan. Uh, so that's, this is the parameter for my plan. Uh, and then I'm going to uh, pass in parameters httpd and yum. I could also theoretically add the name and provider as parameters to this plan to further generalize it, but for this use case, I really just want to focus on Apache. And then I've got a, a task that I've installed called Service Linux, so it's from the service module on the Forge, and I'm going to use that to restart the httpd service and then I'm going to use this run command function, which will, like it says, run the command uh, to verify that it actually worked. All right, and let's run the plan. Cool. So we can see from the output that uh, Apache is indeed running and loaded, and everything looks to be about as expected. So, yeah, that's how plans work, orchestrating things together. Back to slides. Uh, there are a handful of other Bolt commands. It's not all tasks and plans. Uh, I already showed you how you can inspect what your tasks and plans are doing, the metadata about them. Um, we also have Bolt command run, which just allows you to run a simple command. You can upload a file, you can run a script, and we've recently added this Bolt puppet file install, which will allow you to install dependencies from a puppet file that is uh, in your project. So Bolt is configurable, like many tools out there. There's global configuration at uh, tilde.puppetlabs, bolt, bolt.yaml. Uh, you can also have local configuration for your project that travels with the project or module in your bolter, um, which is really the best way to like share configurations uh, like with the module and with your team. Um, we also allow global and transport specific configurations. So you can set your SSH key, you can set which port you want WinRM to, to use, um, things like that, and you can configure Bolt to be connected to PuppetDB or the orchestrator in order to uh, run Bolt on nodes based on a Puppet query or a PDB query, or you can uh, run Bolt over PCP as well if you connect it to your orchestrator. Uh, really quick, we'll take a peek at the uh, 
configuration file I've got. Uh, all right, so I've got my module path set uh, to my puppetized demo modules. And then I also, since I have my little like pseudo puppet module, I included that directory as well. And it's colon separated. Uh, I think it's semicolon if you're using Windows. Um, I want the output format to be human. This is default. You can also output JSON if you want it to be consumed by an API. Uh, and then I've got my SSH configuration. Again, just uh, using, uh, like I always want it to use the root user. I always want it to use this private key. I can set SSL false on WinRM, uh, pretty typical configurations. And then down here, I've got my configuration to connect to PuppetDB. So I can set the server URL and authentication data for that. And then I can use PuppetDB query to gather nodes and then run tasks or plans on those sets of nodes instead of having to make lists of nodes in my inventory file by name. Uh, back to slides. All right. We've also uh, talked a little bit about the inventory file. So that's where you can store configurations specific to those sets of nodes. Uh, you can set transport specific configuration for nodes or those node groups. And this will override configurations uh, in the config file. Uh, you can also set uh, arbitrary facts or variables on those nodes. And then you can use those to make decisions about uh, what nodes to run on in your plans. So you can do something like uh, for all um, targets that have the variable foo set to bar, uh, do this thing. Kind of a nice feature. Um, again, back to the demo, and we'll take a quick look at my inventory file. Um, and so in this one, I've got a group called SSH nodes and then two subgroups in that. So I've got my non-agents and my puppet agents, and those both just have two nodes. And then I have configured just the puppet agent subgroup to have its tempter at slash TMP. And then for the entire SSH nodes group, I've got my SSH configuration. A lot of this is redundant with my um, Volt .yaml, mostly because I didn't want this demo to break, but uh, you could have different configuration here. And then I've also got some WinRM nodes and some WinRM configuration. Uh, back to slides. Uh, the last command that I want to talk about is bolt puppet file install. So again, this was pretty recently introduced. It's a way to install your puppet module dependencies which is how you gain access to the tasks in those modules. Um, and yeah, pretty straightforward. The public file, it can be in either your bolter or in your global bolt configuration directory. Quick example. Um, so yeah, pretty typical puppet file, uh, very simple. And if I see here, do bolt puppet file install. Let me uh, remove my existing ones just to prove it works. All right, so I don't have a modules directory. I'm gonna make one just because I'm not sure if it'll work without it. And then bolt puppet file install. And since we're on conference Wi-Fi, this could be fun. All right, instead of waiting for this, we'll uh, go back to slides. But, oh, we'll check back later. All right. <laughs> um, all right, so let's get to the new features, the new stuff, the exciting things. Bolts apply. So now you can have Puppet Code in your Bolt plans. This is really powerful because it allows you to use all of the content that is already on the forge to enforce state from Bolt masterlessly. And it also allows you to use like state-based configuration along with those ad hoc tasks 
that you might need to run. Restarting a service in the middle of setting your state, uh, changing a file, whatever the case may be, like not everything is at the end state now, you can also have those intermediary steps. So apply works by having apply blocks of manifest code in the plan. It compiles and applies a standalone puppet manifest on the uh, bolts runner. So the machine you're running bolts on will compile the puppet manifest and then send that to the target node where it's applied. Uh, manifest blocks can use existing content from the forge. Most features of the puppet language that you already know are available in the puppet language. There's no, um, nothing that you can't really do from the apply block. So if we cut back to demo, and my puppet file finished, yay. Haha, -ha, see they are there, all right. So, let's see if my canned demo will uh, continue to work. Okay. Apologies for this, but okay. So I have my apply plan here. Uh, I have just one parameter, which is the list of nodes that I want to have Puppet apply my code to. And then uh, just like this morning, I'm running that apply prep function on my nodes to prepare them to be applied to. And I am returning the apply return uh, running it on these nodes, and I'm using the Apache module here to set up a virtual host for puppetize.com. Uh, so I'm including my Apache class and then setting up that virtual host. Pretty straightforward. All right, and we'll run it and get some nice output. Uh, so I can see that this is a little bit garbled, um, but usually you can see that um, the resource has changed. So I can see that Puppet actually ran on my targets and which ones failed and which ones finished, and they all successfully finished. Back to demo. All right, one last one. Uh, we've also added cross-platform tasks. So this gives you the ability to write a task in many different languages uh, for different platforms. And then Bolt is smart enough to know, based on your metadata, uh, which one to use in which case. So I don't need to specify, uh, use this PowerShell one when there's Windows. I can specify in my metadata uh, this specific task requires that PowerShell is there, and if it's not there, then don't run it. And this one requires that Shell's there. Shell's not there, don't run it. Um, and using that, I can uh, like run, just run the task and not need to know uh, which targets I'm running on. Bolt will select the right one for which targets it's being applied to. So uh, yeah, metadata describes this using requirements. Um, you can specify additional features. There are built-in features. So PowerShell and Shell are the examples I used. Those are ones that Bolt automatically collects, but you can manually set features as well. And the task runner will choose the first implementation whose requirement are satisfied. I think I'm running out of time, so I'm just gonna fast forward a little bit. Um, other features, we've added local configuration in the Bolter puppet file, lots of plan functions, Bolt spec, uh, local transport support, so you can just run on localhost and not even be connected to the internet, um, a query flag, an inventory file. Like I said, pretty much everything in Bolt has been added or at least touched in the last year. Uh, the very last pitch I want to make is that Bolt is a open source community driven project and we really want your participation. If you find a typo in our docs, let us know. Make an issue on GitHub, tell us in Slack, 
Uh, there's lots of avenues for getting a hold of us and helping us improve Bolt. If you have ideas for features you want, we want to hear them. Uh, if you want to help with Bolts, like we'd love to have your participation on the project. Uh, it lives at puppetlab slash Bolt on GitHub. There's documentation. If you want to easily get started with Bolt, there's a Tasks Hands-On Lab in GitHub that is a really good starting place. And that's about all I've got. Thank you. <laughs>